Cheerios, Beethoven, photography. I love that in the field of education, three seemingly unrelated elements can come together to form a powerful learning experience for students. Recently, my fourth grade music students arranged Cheerios on a staff to notate the famous melody from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Then they took photos of their work before playing the melodies and, well, eating them. <laughs> I admit a little concern when I considered my students' conversations around their dinner tables that evening. I could just picture a parent asking, what did you learn at school today? And my student answering, Beethoven is crunchy. Mm -hmm. The dinner table is where so many of my own learning experiences occurred growing up. You might not think that learning Latin over supper sounds like a blast, but here's how it would work. Bite of meatloaf, fork full of carrots, swallow of milk, then my father's voice. The word muscle comes from the Latin musculus, which means little mouse. Have you noticed that when you flex and relax your arm muscles, it almost looks as though a little mouse is running along inside your arm? This, followed by lots of arm flexing, ooing and aahing, and that's disgusting-ing, in between more bites of meatloaf. As was the case for perhaps most of you, my first teachers were my parents. Now, Dad didn't limit himself to teaching us Latin roots. My sisters and I were delighted when he helped us to master an entire sentence in German. We were convinced of this phrase's monumental importance as we recited over and over, <clears throat> Sie finden uns am schnellsten auf den gelben Seiten. When one of us finally thought to ask Dad what the sentence meant, he replied, you'll find us fastest in the yellow pages. <laughs> he had seen that on a sign on the door of a business and thought it sounded fun. From my mother, I've learned different lessons. The art of multitasking, for instance, before that term was ever coined. And mom taught us our family about remaining calm under pressure. I remember a time when several of us were working in the kitchen. I became aware of my mother moving from the stove toward the sink, carrying a potholder in flames as she approached the sink where my dad was standing in the same tone of voice one might use to comment on the weather. Mom said, excuse me, dear, this is on fire. <laughs> the lesson, remain calm and polite under pressure. Considering my Latin and German learning experiences as a child, it's not surprising that the nomination, which resulted in my being honored today, had a language connection. It has been my privilege during these past two academic years to work with three members of your class of 2017, Liz Nelson, John Gallagher, and Christine Hood, on a foreign language program for Grinnell's third and fourth grade students. 27 Grinnell College students have poured time, effort, and boundless enthusiasm into making Spanish and French accessible to our students at Davis Elementary, and I am incredibly grateful, as I am overwhelmingly humbled to stand in front of you as a representative of the teaching profession. I thank you sincerely for this honor. Now, many of you graduates will not enter the field of education professionally, but each of you has so much to teach others. I challenge you, please share your knowledge, communicate your ideas, show your skills. Go ahead, teach someone, which I think would make a very fun t-shirt. <laughs> yes, I thought about tossing the shirt out into the crowd, but as my husband and son can affirm, it would be as likely to land on President Kington's head as it would be to land in one of your laps. I'll just keep it here with me. Let me finish by sharing a few examples of what makes teaching a worthy pursuit and an absolute joy in my life. When a third grader raises his hand to exclaim, 
hey, both of those measures have four beats because two half notes add up to the same as four quarter notes, it's a good day. When I hear seven consecutive correct notes on a soprano recorder, it's a good day. When a fourth grader who has seen me model kind behavior stops on her way to recess to help a boy whose pencil box has just exploded all over the floor, it's a good day. When a student interrupts my class to offer me a birthday cupcake, it's a good day. And that's not about the cupcake. It's about the positive connection I've made with that student that makes him think of celebrating with me even though I'm just the music teacher. Okay, if it's chocolate, it's sort of about the cupcake too. In your chosen field, the measure of a good day might be significantly different from those I've just described. Whatever your measures, it is my hope that you will indeed have a good day.